Um, well, thank you everyone uh, for coming to our Synergy Session 102, uh, which is why no workspace is complete without content. Uh, here with you today, my name is Alicia Eve, and I'm the Senior Manager for the Workspace Product, uh, product Marketing Team, and I'll let my, my esteemed colleague introduce herself. Caroline Long, I am a Senior Manager on the Product Team working on Workspace. Awesome. So we're really excited to be here today and really just to you know, tell you up front what you, what you can expect from this session. You know, we're really going to show you today and demonstrate how Citrix content collaboration can help your employees collaborate securely, connect all your content uh, from one access point, and finally, leverage tools to proactively manage your environment. And that, I know that all sounds well and good and, and I know you're super excited to learn about it, but one of the other unofficial rules that we have is we're going to have fun today, right? It's three o'clock, it's the first day, you saw an awesome keynote, but what is fun without sugar? Um, so before we pass anything out, does anybody have a peanut allergy that we need to be aware of? Okay, well if not, we're gonna ask uh, two of our colleagues to, uh, to hand out Reese peanut butter cups. And this is, this is the direction that we're gonna head in for the remainder of the session today. I love an overblown analogy, so get ready. <laughs> And we do have Hershey, uh, Hershey uh, chocolate bars as well. And I think they're serving cupcakes outside, I saw. So lots of sugar this afternoon. Yeah. So hopefully by this, you, you just fly right out of here with excitement and really on keep a sugar you going. high. Absolutely. And so keeping with this theme as, as we're passing this out, we're going to retitle our session for today. So instead of why no workspace is complete without content, it is now why Citrix workspace is like a Reese's peanut butter cup. So like I said, we're, we're going in, we're going all in on this uh, today. <laughs> so you know, as, as you get your, get your Reese peanut butter cup here and you start unwrapping it, let me explain to you why this is like a workspace. Um, so as you, you know, take that first bite and you get that chocolate and that peanut butter, that peanut butter is your content. And the reason why it's your content is because without it, it's just a Hershey bar, right? It's just, it's just a hollow void of a, a chocolate shell. And your content is really what differentiates this. And if you think about it from a workspace standpoint, that's very similar to the, to the role that content plays in your organization. It's the lifeblood of your organization and it differentiates you from everyone else in your, in your competitive market. And then wrapped around that peanut butter, those are your apps, your apps and devices. And then you have your analytics. And I actually love how Caroline talks about this. So I'm gonna let her explain how, how uh, analytics folds into this as well. So the magic of analytics here, and hopefully everybody got to see the fantastic things that we unveiled at the keynote this morning, where Citrix Analytics goes above and beyond is because we've put all of those devices, apps, and content into a single workspace, we're now getting a single set of analytics that's looking at all of that. It's that whole Reese cup, it's the entire thing. Thanks, Caroline. Um, so we've got content, we've got apps and devices, we talked to you about how analytics fits into this, and as you tear open that Reese, that Reese wrapper, that is your secure digital perimeter, right? So that is what's keeping that Reese cup from the outside elements that are trying to either take it or make it make it not as appetizing, and if you don't want if you an will. exposed Reese cup. No, exactly, that sounds that's bad. not good, yeah. So, I want to want to talk uh, go through a little bit a little bit of a story. So if you remember back to your childhood, um, and you know thinking about you know when you really wanted something right from your parents, it probably looked something like this, right? You you kind of get the doe eyes, um, you start pleading, and you know you go to your first parent, and you're like, please can I have this wonderful Reese cup or, or really any kind of candy. And you know, being the first parent that you ask, there's a pretty good chance they're going to say no. But you are you are a very um, you're a very smart little little child, and you think, well, there's a way I can get what I want, right? And so, what do you do? You go to the other parent, who may or may not, you know, or more likely because you've gone through this before, gives you exactly what it is that that you wanted. And this scenario is something that we actually see play out today, probably in, in your environments, and here's how. So this is your end user, right? They're just begging for you to give them tools to help them do their job better, right? And as an IT administrator, the role that probably many of you play, sometimes you're not set up for success to be able to say yes. But the challenge is, is that end user, they find ways to do things, right? Whether or not you're aware of that, 
And unfortunately, a lot of those ways will put your, your environment at risk because they're not doing it in a secure manner. And that's really what we want to talk to you today. How do you give the end users what they want, you know, which is to do their jobs and share, but in a way that you can manage uh, securely? And it really is all about collaboration. Um, so another story, you can tell we like stories. We like stories here. And with collaboration, collaboration is everywhere, right? It's, it's prolific. It's that buzzword that I feel like pops up in every analyst review and every you know, news article, et cetera. And collaboration is great, but it's coming at us from every angle. And it's not dissimilar to those holidays like Valentine's Day or Halloween where you get lots of candy. And there are lots of strategies around what you do with all that candy, and especially now that I have two children of my own. Um, there's really two ways to deal with it. And one of it's my way, which is, I have a theory that I can only actually metabolize so many calories at once. So if I eat all the candy on one day, that makes it better, right? Because there's no way that my body can po possibly do all that. But then I end up like this, right? Where I can't move, my stomach is very full. And this is very much similar to collaboration, right? There's all different tools, there's all different things coming at people, and it leaves you feeling really full and uncomfortable at the end of the day. And so to help with that, I'm going to turn it over to Caroline to walk you through what we can do to help. Thanks. So this is how we want to help you be able to give your users that collaborating and that sharing ability without putting them in a sugar coma, which hopefully we didn't do to you guys yet. Um, we want you to be able to give them the way to collaborate and not inflate your storage. No one wants version 27 of the file. We want the final version. We want to collaborate on that file. How do we do that effectively? So the first one here that we're going to talk about is online document viewing and co-editing. Within Workspace, you can open files right in a web browser, no downloading necessary, and be able to collaborate by yourself or co-collaborating here. You can see in our image, we have two people indicated by the green and purple. This is using Office 365 editing right in a browser, rich file text. And I can see Alicia editing a file, and we can work together, even if we're in completely different places. And again, it's one version of that file. We're not binge eating the candy. We're just getting that one collaboration experience that we really needed. This also is going to save back automatically. If you've ever had that college experience where your computer crashed because it's a terrible college laptop, and oh my gosh, did you save that last version of the file? Ugh! Auto save. That fear is gone. No worries there. The next one, this is probably my favorite feature we have built in years. I use this all the time. Uh, this is document feedback and approval workflow. How many times, you know, even just producing a deck for a, a session like Synergy, you have to look at a ton of different people's perspectives, make sure that we're using the right words. We probably have to get approval to use Reese's all over it and uh, give you guys candy. How do we do that effectively? We have tools for that. So here, we can initiate a workflow. I can assign who I want to get that feedback or approval from, set a due date for when I want them to respond, and provide either a sequence for approvals or just ask for that feedback. And we can start collaborating, again, on a single file version. And you can see all the way over here, we have our comments in line on the document. Everybody can see everybody else's feedback, so I don't have to get the same comment from Eugene that I got from Alicia. They can see and they can even talk back and forth and reply to each other's comments. And we're able to do this all within this web browser and see all of those changes. So we can go through something like producing a deck for Synergy all through Workspace. Now, the very last one, a lot of you are probably like, you told me this is a blown out analogy, and I'm a parent. How many people in here are parents? OK, a lot. So you're probably like, you can't just give kids candy all the time. That is not how this works. <laughs> so as a parent, you got to also do the thing of, well, you can have the Reese's, but only if you eat your broccoli first. So this is what's in it for you as an IT admin, because we don't want to just enable them to share and collaborate easily. We also want to make sure it's protected and safe. That's a key component, and that's often what's in our way of enabling that end user productivity that they're really driving towards. So here is our view only sharing and watermark. And this is one of many features we're going to talk through today, looking at how we're able to protect that content. So in this case, we're actually able to share a file 
where the user isn't able to download at all. They can only view in a browser. They have the ability to take a look, see the content, maybe review my PowerPoint, but they're not gonna be able to download it. They're not gonna be able to create their own version. This is ours, we made it, we get to keep it. But we can go another step further and actually add dynamic watermarking here. So you can see in our example, we have the options of view only, viewing online, view with watermark, being able to download, but with that watermark on it so that it's, again, a protected document. Or you know maybe they're full control. Maybe it's somebody you're great with and they, they need that downloadability. But we're able to set that. And you can see the example with the watermark here um, showing Nathan's email address from where he viewed this file. So this is that broccoli for us to say, hey, you can share, but you can share with our security policies in place and with that protection to keep our content and our, our privacy data secure. All right, so we're gonna take a look at a demo. Everybody loves a good demo. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you the funnest fact about this demo right up front, which is this is completely done in a virtual desktop. So here, we're looking right in our file browser on the desktop. You can see us browsing and we have favorite folders, network shares, that's going to my legacy networks, Office 365, and then the share file folders that you might be familiar with for personal cloud, shared folders. And we can go into those, go browse subfolders, see more of our personal cloud. What about those users that did do something like put all their files in a Dropbox account because they needed to share? Let's tie those back in. We can get those into the workspace through these connectors. But that's not all we're able to do. This isn't just file browsing. We actually have the ability to collaborate on these files directly from within the application here. So you can see some of these options to share, getting links, being able to email those links out, share those files, or even initiating those workflows that I talked about. Or maybe you're just wanting to open that file up, standard browsing, working with files on a desktop capability. But again, this is on a virtual desktop where we're giving new links to all of these files. So here we're starting a workflow. We're gonna get some feedback on the press release for this presentation. Um, so we'll ask Nathan to give us some feedback. He helped us build some of this, so he'll be a great one to tell us whether we're on the right track. So we can set a due date here. We need this by Friday, you know, Synergy's kind of happening. So type in his email, get that sent over. We can give him a message like, hey, we really want feedback. I know it's, it's Synergy right now, so it's short notice, but can you please take a look at this? Just give them a, hey, can you review this press release for us? Make sure we wanna get this out the door. And I haven't left my native desktop here. I'm still just right there, able to click around and do this immediately. So he's gonna get an email letting him know that he now has the ability to see that file and comment right on it to give us his feedback. But Alicia probably needs to know that we're writing this press release too. So let's go ahead and give her a heads up. We're gonna send it to her. So I can come in here and I can actually share that. And I can do it in a local mail client or I can use the content sharing feature here with Citrix files. Put in again an email, and then we'll get to see we have a number of sharing options. And that security policy is gonna play through to here too. So we're gonna see some of those same features where we're gonna be able to actually set up. How often is she able to access that file? How many downloads? Do we wanna do a view only or a watermark? And you can see that under our options here. Um, we can even go in and encrypt the email that's sending this file itself. So there are a lot of these broccoli features that are gonna help you and help your end users keep all their data safe, but it's not making it difficult on that end user. All of these things are very simple clicks. They're all right within that desktop. And as you can see, the important piece here, this can work natively or virtualized and it looks the same. The end user experience is seamless for them. All right, my other favorite story. If you're like me and you love going to the movies, you gotta get the, the popcorn with the tons of butter on it because popcorn with tons of butter. But you also get some candy boxes and if you have ever experienced the mortifying embarrassment of spilling this during a movie, like you can just hear the noise of it rolling down the concrete floor in your head, right? Like it's loud and somehow even though it's a dark room, you can just, everyone knows it was you. I, I don't know how that's true, but it's true. Well, Sometimes content gets away from us too. Everybody has those users who they know have emailed a file to their personal email address to get access to it on a mobile device, or they put it in a Dropbox account, or they have a lot of people who have started up these other file sharing capabilities within their business. We wanna help you bring that stuff back together. So I'm gonna tell you two wonderful, magical things about the world that we live in. One, we can bring all that content together with Workspace. 
But also, this is a real candy that exists. You can eat Reese's that are filled with Reese's Pieces. I found it in the store. It is amazing. There's a whole other level of this later. There's like a shocking innovation in the candy market that I'm really impressed by. But the innovation that we're going to talk about today here is Workspace. And again, we're going to give you the ability to bring that content together and bring it all into Workspace in one place, in one user interface with all those great features I just told you about, the watermarking, the feedback and approval workflows. So here, you can actually connect your content to any storage. Wherever your content is, we want to work with it. Is that on network shares? Unless your business is like under two years old, probably. It's probably on some network shares. SharePoint, SharePoint Online, Office 365 and OneDrive. Maybe you have some Documentum or even personal cloud services like those people that went into Dropbox. And with these, you can pull in those connections. They're right in the Workspace UI, which makes them also available on mobile, again, in that same Workspace component. And that's going to allow them to tie that together. And then they can share, download, preview, and they can do all of that Sorry, with the security that you're putting in place and that, those policies that you're wanting them to work with. So from there, that's going to even extend to those cloud connectors. So that could be something like a box or a Google Drive. Or it could be something like an on-prem repository that you've worked with for years and years, your end drive or something that you've had set up that you're now wanting to take mobile. This is going to give those users a secure way to get to that data source in a user experience that they're used to and familiar with. Apps and data, or sorry, apps and devices need this data. Otherwise, they're empty shells. Having PowerPoint as an app is great, but it's kind of useless without PowerPoint as files. <laughs> if you don't have the slide deck, you're not really able to do a lot of work. The content is absolutely critical to your workspace. That peanut butter is critical to being a Reese's. So now we're going to talk about a story that you probably all experienced today as you ate a Reese's. Look down at your wrapper. How many people had this happen? This is the worst. You're, the chocolate to peanut butter ratio needs to be perfect. And if you lose that little bit, it's wrong. And no one wants to lose data out of your environment either. Like, if that's not your worst nightmare as an IT admin, it's scary. Well, we don't want to lose that either. So how do we secure that? Citrix Analytics. This is where we take that security and that broccoli healthy eating feature to, the, to a whole other level. Because again, we've brought content together across multiple different repositories, but we have also brought content devices and apps, everything to do with a user's work during the day into Workspace, which means that we're going to be able to work with them and see that analytics across all of those components and get a ton of different insightful data here. So here in this screen, we're looking at Andrew Jackson uh, as a specific user. We're actually seeing a timeline of events that have led up to his risk score. And in this case, we're looking at a specific risky factor with content. In this scenario, we've clicked into a section here at 9.30. It looks like there was excessive amounts of sensitive data downloads. We've been working on PowerPoints for Synergy for a while now. All of a sudden this week, early in the morning, a lot of them get downloaded all of a sudden. Well, our machine learning here within Citrix Analytics has identified that that's abnormal for this user. That behavior doesn't belong. So here, we've not only been able to notice the things that are happening, we've had some downloads, we've had an EPA scan failure, we've had a lot of uploads, but finally we've hit a threshold where we've said, this is really risky and we're not comfortable with this. And in this case, it's actually noticed this and said that it's breached our policy for, for this threshold. So I can come in and look at some details. I can see everything that happened. I can dig into that. And it's actually going to be able to take actions on that. So let's break down what we're seeing here. The Citrix Analytics, again, we're bringing together. If we start here. We have our SaaS apps, our mobile apps, our virtual, our content, most important for this session. Those devices, networks, even our partner ecosystem, all of this is pulling together into Workspace. And that becomes colored with the context of your user's behavior. Where do they access from? What times of day do they normally access? What types of content are they going in and out of a lot versus not very frequently? 
What apps are they using to access that? What networks are they typically on? I am not a morning person. If I download a ton of sensitive data at 6 a.m., you better believe that's abnormal behavior. It's gonna catch that. That goes into that machine learning. It's watching and looking at individual user profiles and your company as a whole. And it's learning from that and it's gonna give them a score. Very simple, green, yellow, red. Yellow, caution, green, good to go, red. Yeah, we're a little scared here. And that's where we're able to look at it. And if you remember from the keynote this morning, we're able to go from, hey, we think everything that's weird is a wolf, to being able to look at the bigger picture and see that end to end of your environment. And it's gonna come in and give notifications and policy control that you've set up. So I have a rule here for excessive file sharing. It's gonna feed that back into an automated action and actually be able to remediate on that risk issue. Another great piece of news here, this is actually gonna extend not just to cloud data, it's going to your connected content as well. So we can look at, even with those on-prem connectors or those cloud connectors, are there excessive downloads? Are there excessive uploads? Is there too much sharing going on? Is there a sudden mass amount of deletion? That's something we see with ransomware a lot, and we're actually able to really call out and find those attempts like that. All of that crosses every content repository that you have hooked up to your workspace. Once again, you're getting your users to eat that broccoli, and it's not gonna be painful for them at all. To them, it's a Reese's cup. So let's look at another quick demo here. This is actually within Citrix Analytics, and we're gonna look at an entire workspace environment, but here, we're setting up some rules. So I'm gonna actually say, this is where we set up that excessive file download. So if there's excessive file downloads, I have a lot of different actions that can happen. The user can get disabled. In this case, we're gonna actually say that we're gonna expire all the links to those files. If there's a lot of downloads happening, it might be that a link got forwarded to the wrong person and we really wanna shut that down as fast as possible. So that's now an automated rule that my Citrix Analytics is gonna do for me as a security admin. You can see how that's gonna play into these scores here. We have you know, some people in the red, this is me, my security risk is going down. Um, but you can see here it's looking at, and it actually sees that there was an expiration here that happened automatically. There was excessive file sharing, all of a sudden it shut down all of those links. And I can come in here as an IT admin and look at that and say, wow, that's probably abnormal. But hey, Citrix Synergies this week, I bet she's collaborating on PowerPoints for their sessions. Maybe this one's a false positive. And you can react to that as an IT admin and help the system learn, and it's gonna build over time, as all good machine learning does. But the best news here is you no longer need to be Mufasa surveying your kingdom all the time. Everything the light touches, analytics is looking at, and they're gonna be able to react and help you out and touch on those things. So this is really giving you a 24 seven watch on what's going on with your environment that isn't hampering your end user's usability. We're not saying don't do it. We're saying that we're gonna look out for you while you do it. So here, we're gonna switch over and let Alicia start talking a little bit about the next generation of candy and desserts. <laughs> because let me tell you, the future is here in Reese's Cups. Absolutely. Um, well, thank you, Caroline, for giving you a great preview of where we are today. Um, so I, I, I love this picture because it really speaks to where we're going um, and probably what you hear all the time and what you're realizing. You know, so we've talked a lot about the fact that we have apps and devices, there's content, secure digital perimeters. But what's really happening in the environment is all these things are coming together, right? It's becoming very, very liquid, if you will. And, and I think the picture accurately represents that and also makes me incredibly hungry because that looks fantastic. Um, so before we proceed, I just want to make sure this is not a roadmap, right? So um, we're going to kind of go through some, um, some themes that we're hearing uh, from you all, from you know, other publications, et cetera. But we're not unveiling any kind of new functionality. Um, but we just want to give you, you know, a preview of what we're seeing um, and, and how we're thinking about this and hopefully have a little bit of dialogue with you as well so, um, so we know exactly what you're, what you're encountering in your environments. So, like all good sessions, we're gonna have some trivia. Um, so hopefully you've got a little bit of a sugar rush, you're pretty excited. Um, it's a pretty basic question though. So why do documents exist? And we have four different, um, four different uh, choices here. 
Um, and so I'll give you just a second to kind of think about it, and then we'll just do a raise of hands um, for, for which one you feel like you know, might, be, might be the most accurate. Um, so how about share information? Documents, why they exist. Okay, so a lot of people. Um, for the corporate record, anyone there? Yeah. Um, how about creates a need for word processing? I know you're all thinking that that's probably the right one, um, but I know you can't raise your hand. Um, and then <laughs> leftover, leftover from paper-based processes. Absolutely. Um, so most of you got all three, right? And so what we're seeing from a document standpoint, um, even though we, we take them as you know, almost for granted and they're ubiquitous and hey, this is how we communicate information, there's actually three, three reasons for that, right? To share information, corporate record, and left over from those paper-based processes. Um, and you know, I don't, every company I feel like has a different, you know, a different um, preference. Some it's PowerPoint, right? Nothing exists unless it's in a PowerPoint or a Word or a PDF, et cetera. Um, and even though they're ubiquitous, they're actually not a really great way to share information. So you heard a little bit this morning in the keynote about how 20% uh, of, a, of a knowledge, you know, kind of a typical worker's time is spent just finding information, right? Um, and that's, I find that to be really alarming. Um, but it also, as soon as you say it, you're like, yeah, that sounds about right. I spend a lot of time. Um, when I first saw this, I started thinking back to all of the hours that I spent on a hunt for that one slide, right? Like, I know this exists. Um, and then it becomes a, a vendetta, right? Like, I'm going to find this thing if it's the last thing I do. And next thing you know, it's been two hours. I swear I remember it. I know it was stored Exactly, here. right? But it even gets worse. So. You're trying to find information, you know it exists. So what do you do? You go and you email or call the person in your company that knows everything, right? And there's, every company has that one person because they've been there, they've either been there for a long time or they're just really smart and they always know the answer to everything. And they're that linchpin that you're like, I don't know what we're gonna do when this person leaves, right? So you contact them, you email them, and then you spend about five, a little over five hours waiting for them to get back to you, right, for information. And then maybe they get back to you and they're like, yeah, I don't know, I, I think I know, I, I've seen that too. But then you're like, all right, well, I've already wasted half the day. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and build what I already know exists. And how frustrating is that, right? I don't know, I don't know a, a, a seething frustration worse than building a slide that I already know is somewhere that I just can't find, right? And now you're jogging your memory, you're like, gosh, that was a great slide. I mean, you know, what was that number? Where, and then now you're, you're chasing down different sources, et cetera. And before you know it, you have spent an entire day just finding information, waiting for information, and then duplicating that information. That's not a super productive day, um, I think, by anybody's standards. It's not a super pleasant day either. No. Nobody ends that day feeling great. Exactly, exactly. Morale's just not great after that. Um, you know, and really this comes down to institutional knowledge. Um, so I would love to hear if somebody, is, a brave soul today, is willing to raise your hand and claim in a declarative fashion that you have a great way to um, capture and transfer institutional knowledge. The mics are on the side. Yeah, feel free. If you're just feeling really good about this, like, no, I have it solved, I would love to hear it. No takers? Yeah, I know. It, it was kind of a trick question, right? Because no one, no one knows how to do this. You know, that's, and, and just thinking about a couple different ways that we've seen companies do it and, and that we've had conversations around, um, really it comes down to three scenarios. One is, I call him the intern, right? So you have that one person that knows everything. So what is the corporate solution? Well, let's hire that college grad and just follow that person around for the summer and just write down everything they do. And that works for a little while, except then when you know the summer's over or they ask for that full-time job, it's like, yeah, that's not in the budget, and then they leave, and you're back where you started. And then the second way is you know, building a repository of some kind, whether that's a content management system where you just start filing everything, right? And you just end up with this you know, crazy, um, you know, crazy full repository of information that's probably not categorized super well and that no one really likes to go into because the search isn't that great. And then finally, you have the, the mentoring. Um, so I, I've seen this actually pop up in a lot of the literature out, out uh, right now in terms of you know, pairing a, an experienced employee with a newer employee so that they kind of learn the ropes. And there absolutely are benefits and pros to all of these ways. But the one thing that none of these ways capture 
is the nuances of conversation, right? So the emails, the Slack messages, the Skype, where our work actually gets done. And the reason why this is important is that if you're only capturing the result, but you're not capturing how you got there, when that situation comes up four or five years from now and you're faced with you know, the same types of questions, no one remembers why you decided on the first thing to begin with, right? Because all that knowledge is gone. And that's really what we're hearing you know, from customers uh, like yourselves. And hopefully this sounds familiar, right? Because everyone's struggling with this. Yeah, how often do you have the, why is it like this? I know we picked this for a reason, but what was it? Exactly. You lose that history. You always train on the end result. You document the end result. But you lose that decision-making process in the course. Exactly. And that's content that's valuable. But in a lot of cases, it's thought content. But in 2019, there has to be a better way, right? I mean, we can, you can immerse yourself in virtual reality for an entire day and do nothing. Why can we not solve this problem? Um, so again, just a disclaimer, not a roadmap, right? So I'm just making sure we know. But what if you could do it differently, right? So you know, think about all the different tools that you have in your environment. You know, from a conversation standpoint, maybe you have Slack, um, you have Teams, maybe Skype for Business. There's all kinds of stuff going on in here, right? There's problems being solved, there's collaborating on documents, um, there's hashing out of you know, different scenarios. And then you have email um, and those wonderful 30 thread deep email chains, right? Where instead of just picking up the phone and having a conversation that would last five minutes, we go around and around with 60 people on, on one email. But it ends up getting hashed out, right? Whether it's Outlook you know, or, or uh, Gmail. And Searching then, through email is so pleasant, too. I know, exactly. So Everyone well. loves that, right? And then, you know, finally, you have, you know, your content piece. So, you know, hopefully you're here today. I'm sure that you are all avid users of our content collaboration, um, you know, because that's what your, your IT administration has decided on. Um, or it could be OneDrive, right? That's great, too. Or it could be one of those that we talked about. You might not sanction and it still exists. But data is in all these different places. But what if you could bring it all together, right? What if there was one location where everything could be brought together? And so you, you heard a little bit about this in, in the keynote today, right? And, and we saw this last year in the keynote. But think about it this way. What if every time someone leaves or you hire someone new, instead of spending, desperately begging the person that's about to leave to document how they do their job in that small window of two weeks, what if all that was already captured and when that new person came on board, you could check a few boxes? Right, and give them access to, to certain documents or repositories that were tagged in certain ways. And so immediately, the person doing that job has access to everything, not just you know, the final documents, but they have access to all the conversations, decisions, et cetera, in a super easy, secure way. The, these are the types of problems that we're thinking through. And what you saw today from the keynote you know, is, is that, that first step, right? So today, PJ and, um, and David Henshaw talked about how we're on the organize, guide, and automate. And we're very firmly in the guide. Um, but what, what really makes this unique is that we're not thinking about this from a tech standpoint. It's not a technology trying to find a problem. It's understanding what's going on in your environments and then building a solution around that. And that's fundamentally different than a way that the, what you see in the market just in general from how technology gets developed. And that's why conversations like this are so important because these are the types of use cases we're trying to help you solve um, in a way that is actually uh, based in reality for how it works, not in the idealized environment that I think sometimes gets passed around uh, as, as the, the ideal solution. And so you know, just if you leave here with just a couple of things, I hope, it, I hope, one, it's that we fed you really great candy, right? And two, don't just give your users peanut butter and chocolate on a spoon, right? That's not a cohesive experience. The peanut butter has to go in the chocolate in an exact proportion and crunchiness inside a Reese peanut butter cup. But in all seriousness, you know, please keep in mind that content collaboration, you know, we can help you and your employees you know, share and collaborate securely. Uh, we can help uh, connect all of that data into one access point. And finally, we can help you leverage tools that put you in a proactive state of mind, not reacting uh, to something once, it, once it, it happens. 
So before you leave, I'm sure you've seen a couple of these slides, but we have some really awesome sessions uh, that I definitely want to, to point out. So um, session 103, uh, who actually one of the speakers is here, Nathan Moat, um, how to modernize your legacy infrastructure. Um, I know it sounds super dry, but it's actually going to be fun. So don't let the title fool you. Uh, we have the Citrix and Microsoft. Uh, that's actually going on right now. So obviously, you, unless you have mastered teleportation, you cannot be in two locations at once. But you can catch uh, the uh, recording of that after Synergy. Uh, we also have um, the Learn How, the new intelligent workspace uh, features, organize, guide, and automate work. And we have the speaker here, Vishal, as well. Um, and then finally, we have uh, here how a customer has leveraged Citrix content collaboration and Office 365 you know, to build a really cohesive experience as well. Um, keep in mind the conference. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead and take a picture of this slide. If you liked our session, if you think any of these sound interesting, as Alicia mentioned, um, it's a great way to remember these, and you can come back to them either to attend this week or to watch the sessions recorded later because we are going to make all of them available. Exactly. Uh, we have the surveys, um, so please, you know, please fill the conference surveys out. That's the only way that you know we can continue to design an experience that that you're interested in, um, and as we mentioned, the on demand as well. Um, we also would love to hear uh, hear from you and rate this session. Although, um, if just keep in mind, we gave you candy, right? And feel free to put that in the feedback when as well. When you rate, think about that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so, and you get uh, part of the game on uh, experience. So, if you like games and you're super competitive like myself, definitely take advantage. And then finally, uh, make sure to interact with us. Uh, Caroline and I put both of our, um, our Twitter handles up here. Um, if you thought this session was just amazing, which I'm sure you did, go ahead and tweet uh, Citrix Synergy 102, as well as some of the other hashtags that you've seen flying around. And with that, we want to thank you and open it up for any questions that you all have. So there are mics on the sides of the room so that everybody can hear if you do have a question. And this can be about workspace, about content specifically. We'd love to chat about them. So this is an easy one. Is the um, analytics piece a separate product, or is that included with content collaboration? Analytics is a separate product. Um, it works with content collaboration, but depending on the package that you're purchasing, it may be included or it may be an individual component. It's included in, in the workspace, Yeah. Um, the workspace packaging. Mm -hmm. All three. It is. Mm -hmm. But it will do analytics on both your cloud and on prem mm -hmm. data. Correct. Watermarking. Yes, watermarking also works with the on prem data sources. Mm -hmm. I have to think about that one. That's a recent development. <laughs> so the, the question was can the watermarking that we showed work on prem? Yes, it can work with your network shares and on prem data. Mm -hmm. Yep, in your on-prem storage zones, yes. We like to make everything work cohesively for your end users as much as possible. Any other questions? So that's actually built directly into the product, so you don't need either of those. Um, it's just a part of the content product itself, um, and you can do the commenting and everything right in there. Uh, it's using our own technology. Yeah, the, just so everyone knows, the question was about the feedback and approvals and how, how it's delivered and how it's available. Yeah, it, it was, do you need Office 365 to use, content, or use feedback and approval workflow? You do not. It is built into content that is included within your workspace. And what's really, what's, we didn't touch on it too much, but what I really like about that feature, because a lot of us use both, right? We use the Office 365 integration, but those are two really different use cases. The really nice thing about the, um, the document feedback and approval is it forces people to give you feedback how you want it, right? So when you ask people for feedback, some people like comments, some people do track changes, some people just rewrite your document, and you get to play Where's Waldo to figure out exactly what they changed. But in, in feedback and approvals, you're forcing everybody into one collaborative space to make edits exactly how you want them made, all in one, you know, all in one cohesive experience. Ooh, or my favorite, where they send an email with on slide five, you should change blah oh, yeah. blah blah. Wording. Or they make no changes and, and then by the, suggestions. By the time I read that one, like slide five is now slide nine because yeah. I changed everything else. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's right in line. I, I mean, to me, they they all go cohesively together too. How many versions of this PowerPoint did we need to make? 
one. We were able to co-edit online together from different locations. We're able to put it into a feedback flow and ask Nathan what he thinks and ask Eugene what he thinks and get their feedback and tweak and approve. Then we're able to send it over to get approval to say, hey, we want to do this crazy Reese's thing. Is that okay? We can get that approval and all of that can be on a single version of the file within content. Mm -hmm. And it goes through that life cycle and that process. And it also creates that record, which is, let me tell you, invaluable when you go back to why did we decide that? What happened there? Oh, we have the list of comments that people made. Oh, you know, we got told this change needed to happen because of something coming up. Okay, we tweaked it, and here's the final version that we got. And that history is all recorded there. So it's not just the final decision or the final document, it's the process. Do you have another question? Yeah, absolutely. So lots of changes on the content. That would be done through Office 365 editing, so we're relying on their technology there to do that, that edit. So the same thing you see with Office 365. Other questions? All right. Well, we'll, okay. we'll hang around afterwards if you have anything that you wanted to, to chat about, but we're quite brave enough to, to raise your hand. So thank you once or again, Or if you just everybody. want to give us feedback, we love to talk, yeah. as you can tell. So <laughs> thank you guys for attending. We really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed some snacks. Have a great rest of Synergy.